Alright, what's up guys, this is Jake, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can go ahead and set up your checkout settings within your Shopify store. So, let's go ahead and get started. But before we get into the video, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Sell the Trend. Sell the Trend is a drop shipping app that integrates with your Shopify store that has a bunch of different features that will help make drop shipping easier for you. With Sell the Trend, you can browse verified winning products in over 80 different niches, making finding products to sell on your store simple and fast. You can also use the local shipping feature, which allows you to select a country, and products will be shown to you that offer quick shipping to the selected country, allowing you to offer quicker delivery times for your customers. And once you've found the items you want to sell, the rest of the process is done in just a few clicks. You can import products directly from AliExpress or CJ Dropshipping straight to your Shopify store in one click using the Sell the Trend Chrome extension. And once your products are on your store and you begin to make sales, you can use Sell the Trend to fulfill these orders in just one click. And if you want to boost conversion rates of the products you're selling, you can use Sell the Trend's Vivo Reviews app to import real customer reviews onto your store's product pages to add social proof. Sell the Trend is an all-in-one dropshipping solution built to make dropshipping as hassle-free as possible. So check out Sell the Trend by clicking the first link in the description below. So jumping right into it, what you need to do is just make sure you log into the back end of your Shopify store here. And then once you've logged in, you're going to come down here to settings. And then we're going to come down here to check out and then right here this is where we can go ahead and edit our different checkout settings here so i'm going to go ahead and walk you through what this different stuff actually is and what it means all right so once we're on the checkout page here the first thing we're going to see is the checkout style so right here this is where we can go ahead and customize our checkout page like the actual look of it but i do already have an entire video dedicated to how you can customize the look and aesthetic of your checkout page so I'm not going to be covering that in this video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. In this video, we're just going to be going over the actual settings and setting them up. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the next thing we can take a look at here is customer accounts. So by default, it's chosen to be accounts are optional. So we have three options here. So we can make it to where you don't use accounts whatsoever in your store. You can make it optional for customers to create accounts or they can check out as a guest or you can make it required to where customers must create an account when they check out. Now, the most user-friendly option is probably to have accounts optional because you do want to let people have the option of creating an account in case they want to come back and use their same login information, but sometimes people just want to check out as a guest. So this is going to be the option used most commonly by most websites out there nowadays. The next thing we can do here is enable multi-pass login. So this is essentially if you have multiple websites and you want people to log in to each of your websites through one login. So let's say you have your Shopify store and let's say you also own like a separate blog or a forum or something like that and people log in to that blog or forum to go ahead and make posts on there. And let's say that you are also promoting your Shopify store on there and people click over from there over to your Shopify store and most times they're going to have to re-log in once again but if you enable this and set this up then you can make it to where if someone's logged in over on your other site as soon as they click over to this site your store they'll automatically be logged in so if you have multiple sites this is definitely something you'd want to go ahead and set up so the next thing here is the customer contact methods. We can select what contact method customers use to check out. So we can see your customers can either use a phone number or email, or we can use just email. So the most common option here is going to be phone number or email. So customers can choose to put in their phone number or their email or both when they decide to check out. And then we can choose here to select how customers can choose to get shipping updates. So if they want to get frequent updates on where their package is and delivery. We can choose here SMS or email. So this would be text messages or email. And we can also show a download link to the shop app here, which is an app by Shopify. And what it will do is it's going to go ahead and be like an app on your phone that your customers can install that will go ahead and show shipping and tracking updates on there. 
So you can go ahead and choose to have both of these options enabled or one or the other. And this is purely just going to be up to personal preference. The next section here is going to be customer information. So this is going to be the information that we require when our customers are filling out the checkout form. So by default, it sets our full name is only require last name, but in this case, we're going to typically require first and last name just because it makes more sense. And then right here, we have the company name here. So you can choose whether or not you want to have the company name excluded from the form, which it is by default, or you can make an optional or you can make it required. So depending on what types of products you're selling, if you're selling to businesses, then maybe you'll want to have the company name optional. But if you're purely selling to uh, retail and not selling to any type of business customers, then you probably don't need the company name on the form. Address line two, it's going to be standard to have it as optional. So this is if people live in a specific apartment number. And then we have the shipping address phone number. So this would be if there's a separate phone number for the shipping address. This is also pretty standard to go ahead and keep it as excluded from the form. So the next option down here is tipping. So this just essentially allows customers to tip you at checkout. So if you enable this, customers can either choose like a percentage of their order or a custom amount to go ahead and tip the store um, after checking out. So this isn't something that is super common but you could go ahead and split test it if you want, depending on what you're selling. It might be more common with certain products in stores than others, but it's definitely not something that I see used too often. And then down here we have order processing. So while the customer is checking out, we can go ahead and have this enabled to use the shipping address as the billing address by default and use address auto completion so this is essentially just stuff that can be user friendly for the customer so a lot of times the customer shipping address and billing address are going to be the same so this keeps them from having to fill it out twice and if they do need to actually change the address they can go ahead and edit it themselves so i would recommend keeping this on because this is going to make it more user friendly and address auto completion is also going to be more user friendly as well so i would go ahead and keep that on as well and then right here we have after an order has been paid we can choose to not fulfill any of the orders line items automatically or we can automatically fulfill the order or we can automatically fulfill only the gift cards of the order so this is going to be dependent on how your fulfillment process goes so this is going to be up to preference there's no recommendation here and then we can see here after an order has been fulfilled or when all items have been refunded, we can go ahead and automatically archive the order, which will remove it from our list of open orders. So this is another preference thing as well. The next section here is the consent for marketing. So we can choose to let customers subscribe to marketing methods at checkout. So right here we have email marketing right here, and then we have SMS marketing right here as well. So we can choose to go ahead and pre-select this option. So this would mean that customers would have to uncheck this box at checkout if they did not want to be signed up to email marketing. So this is just going to vary depending on how aggressive you're going to want to be on getting people to sign up to your email list. I know a lot of people do use this option pre-selected. So this is definitely pretty common. And then SMS marketing right here, this is if you are using a SMS marketing service or anything you can also have the SMS consent right here and if you are using that that's going to take some further setup here in your legal settings and I actually have a full video showing how you can set up your SMS marketing I can leave that in the description and then we're going to move on to abandoned checkout emails right here so this is going to vary depending on whether or not you're using a third party app or email service for your email marketing or whether you're just using uh, Shopify for your emails. So if you're using Shopify for your emails, this is where you can use and set up their abandoned checkout emails. So you can see here, you can have on send abandoned checkout emails automatically and you can send to anyone who abandons their checkout. And then you can choose down here the amount of time after the abandoned checkout that the email goes ahead and sends out 
So in this particular case, it's set at 10 hours by default. You can go ahead and split test different ones as well. And like I said, if you are actually using a third party email marketing service or a different email marketing service, then what you're going to want to go ahead and do is just uncheck this entirely because you don't want to be sending out duplicate emails from Shopify and from your other email marketing service. But if you are using this, you can go ahead and here, click on customize email and you can customize the email right here. And you can go ahead and like preview it if you want as well. And you can see by default, this is going to be the default abandoned cart email. So we're going to go ahead and go back to check out right here. And we can see that the next section is going to be the post purchased page here. So you can choose whether or not you want to use an app that features at checkout after customers have selected to pay for their order. So if you are using a post purchase upsell app, this is where it will show up right here. So by default, it will be at none. But if you are using a post purchase post post purchase upsell app then you want to just make sure that you select this here so that way you can enable your one click upsells and such after the checkout the next section is going to be the order status page here for additional scripts so this is just where you can add in tracking scripts and other customizations by default it's going to be empty but certain apps and third-party services that you use are going to give you pieces of code that you're going to have to place into your order status page so this is where you place that here and then same thing with the post purchase page scripts, uh, certain apps and third party services that you use are going to give you these additional scripts that you can go ahead and paste in here for their app to perform optimally. And then lastly here, you can go ahead and manage your stores checkout language. So that's it for how you can go ahead and set up your Shopify stores checkout settings. If you did find this video helpful, be sure to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. And also, if you want to see how you can go ahead and customize your Shopify checkout page, so customize the actual look and everything of it, I already have a video on that as well that I'll link in the description. So with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.